Grace O'Malley. Grace O'Malley was lord of the Omai dynasty in the west of Ireland, following in the footsteps of her father Owen Dubdara Omai. Commonly known as Grania Whale in Irish folklore, she is a well known historical figure in 16th century Irish history. Her name was rendered in contemporary English documents in various ways, including Grania O'Malley, Granny O'Malley, Granny Nemai, Granny O'Malley, Grain NY Male, Grain Nee Male, Granny O'Malley, and Granny O'Malley. All are English versions of her actual name, Grania Niwalia. Upon her father's death she took over active leadership of the lordship by land and sea, despite having a brother, Donal and Fiatpa O'Walia. Marriage to Donal and Shaggy O'Flaith Parte brought her greater wealth and influence, reportedly owning as much as 1,000 head of cattle and horses. In 1593, when her sons Tyoboy de Burch and Merchad O'Flaith Parte, and her half-brother Donal and Fiatpa, were taken captive by the English governor of Connaught, Sir Richard Bingham, O'Malley sailed to England to petition for their release. She formally presented her request to Queen Elizabeth I at her court in Greenwich Palace. Niwalia was born in Ireland around 1530, when Henry VIII was King of England and held the title Lord of Ireland. Under the policies of the English government at the time, the semi-autonomous Irish princes and lords were left mostly to their own devices. However this was to change over the course of O'Malley's life as the Tudor conquest of Ireland gathered pace. Owen Dubdar Omai, her father, and his family were based in Clue Bay, County Mayo. He was lord of the Omai dynasty and ruler of Umwal, descended from my Mac Connell. The Uiwalia were one of the seafaring families of Connaught, and they built a row of castles facing the sea to protect their territory. They controlled most of what is now the barony of Murraysk in southwest County Mayo and recognized as their nominal overlords the MacUliam Iachtair branch of the Burks, who controlled much of what is now County Mayo. The Burks were originally Anglo-Norman but by her lifetime completely Gaelicized. Her mother, Margaret or Maeve, was also a Niwalia. Although she was the only child of Dubdara and his wife, O'Malley had a half-brother called Donal Napaipa, the son of her father. The Uiwalia taxed all those who fished off their coasts, which included fishermen from as far away as England. The head of the family was known simply by his surname as Omai. Local folklore had it that as a young girl Niwalia wished to go on a trading expedition to Spain with her father. Upon being told she could not because her long hair would catch in the ship's ropes, she cut off most of her hair to embarrass her father into taking her. This earned her the nickname Grania Whale, usually anglicized as Grania Whale. The nickname may also come from Grania Nomhale. As a child she most likely lived at her family's residence of Belclare in Clare Island, but she may have been fostered to another family since fosterage was traditional among Irish nobility at the time. She was probably formally educated, since she is believed to have spoken in Latin with Queen Elizabeth I in 1593. Niwalia was married in 1546 to Donal and Chagy O'Flaith Parte, Dan Aster heir to the O'Flaith Parte title, which would have been a good political match for the daughter of the Omai chieftain. As O'Flaith Parte Dan Aster, Donal and Chagy one day expected to rule Ear Connaught, the area roughly equivalent to modern Connemara. She bore three children during her marriage to Donal and Chucky. In 1565, Donal was killed in an ambush while hunting in the hills surrounding Loch Corrib. This was, undoubtedly, part of Donal's wider struggle with the Joyces for control of Hen's Castle on the Loch. Grania returned to her own lands and established her principal residence on Clare Island. She allegedly took a shipwrecked sailor as her lover. The affair only lasted briefly as he was killed by the McMahons of Ballyvoy. Seeking vengeance, Grania attacked the McMahon Castle of Duna in Blacksod Bay and killed her lover's murderers on Care Island. Her attack on Duna Castle earned her the nickname Dark Lady of Duna. By 1566, Niwalia had married a second time, this time to Ristard and Ayara and Burke, his nickname deriving from his ironworks at Barishul, the place of his principal castle and residence. The first Viscount Mayo was a child of this marriage. Still not satisfied with her revenge, Niwalia then sailed for Ballygroy and attacked the garrison of Duna Castle, overpowering the defenders and taking the castle for herself. Her attack against the McMahons was not the first time she interrupted someone at their prayers. Legend tells of another lord who stole property from her and fled to a church for sanctuary. She was determined to wait out the thief, maintaining that he could starve or surrender. The thief dug a tunnel and escaped. However, and the hermit who took care of the church broke his vow of silence to scold her for attempting to harm someone who had sought sanctuary. Her reply is not recorded. More than 20 years after her death, 
an English Lord Deputy of Ireland recalled her ability as a leader of fighting men, noting the fame she still had among the Irish people. In 1593, in his letter to protesting Niwaya's claims against him, Sir Richard Bingham claimed that she was nurse to all rebellions in the province for this forty years. Bingham was Lord President of Connaught, with the task of controlling local lords who had until then been effectively self-governing. Niwalia had every reason, and used every opportunity, to limit the power of the Kingdom of Ireland over her part of the country. Her castle at Clare Island was attacked by an expedition from Galway led by Sheriff William O'Gay Martin in March 1579. However, they were put to flight and barely escaped. In the later 16th century, English power steadily increased in Ireland and Niwaya's power was steadily encroached upon. Finally, in 1593, when her sons, Tibbet Burke and Murrow O'Flaherty, and her half brother, Donal Napiapa, were taken captive by the English governor of Connaught, Sir Richard Bingham, Niwaya sailed to England to petition Elizabeth I for their release. Elizabeth I famously sent Niwaya a list of questions, which she answered and returned to Elizabeth. Niwalia met with Elizabeth at Greenwich Palace, wearing a fine gown, the two of them surrounded by guards and the members of Elizabeth's royal court. Niwalia refused to bow before Elizabeth because she did not recognize her as the Queen of Ireland. It is also rumored that O'Malley had a dagger concealed about her person, which guards found upon searching her. Elizabeth's courtiers were said to be very upset and worried, but Niwalia informed the Queen thought she carried it for her own safety. Elizabeth accepted this and seemed untroubled. Some also reported that Niwalia sneezed and was given a lace-edged handkerchief from a noble woman. She apparently blew her nose into the handkerchief and then threw the piece of cloth into a nearby fireplace, much to the shock of the court. Niwalia informed Elizabeth and her court that, in Ireland, a used handkerchief was considered dirty and was destroyed. Their discussion was carried out in Latin, as Niwalia spoke no English and Elizabeth spoke no Irish. After much talk, the two women came to an agreement. Included in the stipulations for each party, Elizabeth was to remove Bingham from his position in Ireland and Niwalia was to stop supporting the Irish Lords' rebellions. The meeting seemed to have done some good for Richard Bingham was removed from service. But several of O'Malley's other demands remained unmet, and within a rather short period of time Elizabeth sent Bingham back to Ireland. Upon Bingham's return, Niwalia realized that the meeting with Elizabeth had been useless, and went back to supporting Irish insurgents during the Nine Years' War. She most likely died at Rockfleet Castle around 1603, the same year as Elizabeth, though the year and place of her death are disputed. Her biography has been written by historian Anne Chambers. Documentary evidence for Niwaya's life comes mostly from English sources, as she is not mentioned in the Irish annals. The O'Malley Family Book, a collection of eulogistic bardic poetry and other material of the sort kept by aristocratic Gaelic households of the period, has not survived. There are no contemporary images of her. An important source of information is the 18 articles of interrogatory, questions put to her in writing on behalf of Elizabeth I. She is also mentioned in the English state papers and in other documents of the kind, an example being a letter sent by the Lord Deputy, Sir Henry Sidney, to his son Philip in 1577, there came to me a most famous feminine sea captain called Grace O'Malley, and offered her service unto me, wheresoever I would command her with three galleys and two hundred fighting men. Local traditions concerning her were collected by Irish scholar John O'Donovan in the 1830s and 1840s on behalf of the Ordnance Survey of Ireland. In a letter of 1838 he describes her as being most vividly remembered by tradition and people were living in the last generation who conversed with people who knew her personally. Charles Cormac of Arras, now 74 years and six weeks old, saw and conversed with Elizabeth O'Donnell of Newtown within the mullet who died about 65 years ago who had seen and intimately known a Mr. Walsh who remembered Grania. Walsh died at the age of 107 and his father was the same age as Grania. A story is recorded of Niwaya chiding her son Tyo Boyd in the course of an attack on Kinturk Castle, when she thought he was shirking the battle, an Agiari Jalib Folak Armotho and Ada too, and Ada Deetnik too as. She is also recorded as saying with regard to her followers go and parley land loinch to clon con reagas to clon mick and faily na land loinch door. Westport House in County Mayo, Ireland, was the seat of the Brown Dynasty, Marquises of Sligo, direct descendants of Gran and Iwaya. The current house was built close to the site of Cahernamart, an O'Malley fort. The original house was built by Colonel John Brown, a Jacobite, who was at the siege of Limerick and his wife Maud Burke. Maud Burke was Niwaya's great-great-granddaughter.
Cooper. There is a bronze statue of O'Malley by the artist Michael Cooper, the brother-in-law of the 11th Marquess of Sligo, in the grounds of Westport House. Westport House also contains a comprehensive exhibition on the life of O'Malley compiled by author Anne Chambers, a leading authority on Granuale. O'Malley's life has inspired many musicians, novelists, and playwrights to create works based on her life and adventures. Sources Thanks for watching. Don't forget like the video and don't forget to subscribe.